Please don't move. Please don't move. Please don't move. <gasps> This supposedly has some memorabilia from really popular stars. I mean, even like little booklets, celebration of people's like funerals. Oh, there's one of Billy Graham right there. All these really cool people. Glenn Campbell. Okay, this one really caught my eye right here. Raggedy Ann doll. Look at that. Okay, there's some people here that I never heard of. Quite a few of them. Oh, I fair Foster. Oh, that's right, she did pass away. Oh, rest in peace. Yeah, it was right around the time Michael Jackson had passed. Okay, this one definitely took my breath away. You know that I'm a huge Paul Walker fan. They have a little memorial here for Paul Walker, which is, oh, what was that? <gasps> what the heck was that? Okay, there is a lot of speakers and stuff yeah, like a TV right there, but that's that wasn't connected to what I just heard. This one kind of makes me sad too. Robin Williams, one of my favorite actors, comedians ever. These are the actual boots that he wore in the movie RV, that movie right there. That's super cool. So you know I'm a huge Walt Disney fan, 100%. So this glass casket, it's the actual original. When the movie was real popular, Snow White, this company had made this glass casket and it completely disappeared. Somebody robbed it and they ended up finding it years later in a closet at a funeral home. And yeah, that's the original casket that was made in the 1930s after Snow White. And it's in its original condition. But yeah, that's a replica casket that was made. I think uh, Snow White was made in the 1930s. Yeah, 1930s, 1940s. So yeah, it's pretty old. And, I mean, it's in great condition. Wow. So if you look up this place in Houston, Texas, there is a lot of haunted history in Texas. But since this building opened and the artifacts started coming in, workers, visitors have reported seeing things, hearing whispers. Now, one particular visitor almost left out of here running when a casket that he went by started shaking violently. I'm not sure what casket it was, but we're gonna check them all out. Oh, one of my favorite people right there too. Okay, so this particular area of the National Funeral Museum is dedicated to cremations. And there is stuff in here that I have never even seen before, never heard before. Talk about a very creative way to keep your loved one's remains on you. So this is the keepsake pendant which, you know, they're pendants where you can put cremated remains and wear them as a necklace. This one's really cool. You could put your loved one's remains and have a tree pretty much grow with their remains. Interesting. And there's the process of it. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones right here. Very unique. They take your cremated remains and there's the process and they turn it into this real pretty stone that you could wear. This one though is by far the most interesting one where they take cremated remains and turn it into a diamond. Yeah, that's right. Like you could wear some earrings of like your dead relatives. And of course this is a, a process and you could you can Google this if you, if you don't believe me. This is, this is some real stuff. And I guess th these are actual diamonds with human remains. And that's what it looks like. It's called the Memorial Diamond. Now, if you hear like some voices here and there, it's probably from, you know, the speakers. It's only James and I walking around. I don't know where he's at. It, anytime I bring my friend James anywhere, we always get lost and then we end up meeting, but we're nowhere dangerous. This is a really cool museum, but it is haunted. Please keep your eyes and ears open. If you see something, let me know in the comments. Oh, this is a, a crematorium or wow, that's a really nice one. Yeah, crematory equipment or a furnace is what they call it so one of my scariest videos that i've ever uploaded was of a crematorium down in south florida be sure to check that out it was so so scary and one thing i could remember and i never thought of it when you go to a crematorium it's really really hot in there real hot oh wow okay that's pretty scary
Are you behind me, James? I could have sworn I heard somebody with keys. Anytime I hear keys, which I have heard keys before in a haunted location, I think of janitors. I don't know. So that's what a furnace pretty much looks like. My gosh. Please don't move. Please don't move. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> oh, that's creepy. Oh, so they have so many historic hearse here that have been used. Look at this one. This one was a, a sleigh, a sleigh hearse. Wow, look at the craftsmanship of this hearse right here. I mean, it, it's in beautiful condition. I mean, look at the details. Like, all this was probably hand-carved. Gorgeous. So these are probably, like, the very first hearse. I mean, yeah, they are. These were usually pulled by horses. I mean, probably 100% sure. It was all horse. One horsepower, two horsepower. Yeah, I would say hearse have come a long way. That's what they, you know, they look like nowadays. This one's from early 1900s beautiful look at that oh no it's like a little kid casket like a baby now aside from all the creepy hearse that they have here i think the most interesting is the caskets and this casket right behind me is a glass casket it's very very heavy not sure why they created a glass casket but uh, there's some literature right there if you want to read that hey look this one came from florida yo this is cool this is a bronze casket from the 1940s i will say this caskets had a lot more character you know back in the day just like with most things cars seems like caskets nowadays are they're, they're kind of the same look at this old guy right here look at all that detail wow italian renaissance casket beautiful I'm sure that was expensive look at this behind us so this right behind me is a funeral bus it could carry the pallbearers and about 20 mourners i mean this is pretty much like a a whole funeral on a bus it's exactly what it is this is the original bus they used to carry caskets and everything it's called a packard funeral bus i mean could you imagine all the tears that were shed inside here oh, that's what i think of i think of funeral homes pretty creepy actually getting a strange vibe in here and this is where the caskets would go. I mean, most of the time it was one, but they did have room in there for two. And this wasn't really made to go that fast. It was a four-cylinder, I mean, think about it, a four-cylinder bus. I mean, that's probably gonna go about 15 miles per hour max. Okay, that, that's creepy. That's really creepy. Don't you do that again. Black morning dress? Oh, let me know in the comments. Do you think she is scarier than her? Like, who's scarier? I think they're all scary. Oh. Uh, I felt like my shorts just got tugged on. No clickbait. Maybe it's... I have something in my pocket. Maybe it just moved around. Not ruling that out. Yo, you know you heard that. I thought James was right behind me right now. Huh. Wow. What is this? The wake. Back in the day before, I mean, we've always had funeral homes. More than likely were out of someone's house. It was like special houses that were funeral homes and people would live there like the morticians would live there i don't care what anybody says every funeral home including the actual homes they're all haunted every graveyard every cemetery i believe they're all haunted but people would have funerals pretty much in their in their houses and here is a, a setup i was kind of confused at first but it makes perfect sense it's like a, a set of someone's house 
pretty cool. I mean, they would do them at churches too, but I think most of the time they would do them at people's houses. There's a lot of great history here. Talk about like how embalming came about. Icebox containers? Wow. Throughout recorded history, people in every corner hmm. of the world have treated human remains in special ways. A cold air casket? Depending on the culture, bodies could Ooh. be set adrift in burning vessels. Dude, something just made a noise from in there. Closer to the spirit world, or buried immediately, so they Hello? could quickly return to dust. Until the late 19th century, most deceased persons were... Yeah, you can look it up online. Somebody did report one of these caskets violently shaking. I'm trying to spend time on each and every casket to see if I could feel and for some reason I feel that one's at the top of my list. Neato. Now this exhibit over here is all about like the Egyptian culture which I think that's where embalming originally came from and goes a, a mummy. How they would preserve their dead very interesting one of my favorite cultures should definitely go to egypt one day okay i was right about the egyptians being the first recorded culture to do embalming they have some real mummies that you can go visit in egypt and here's some pictures of one that you can visit in cairo it's called the uh, ramses the great or ramses ramses he supposedly is older than Jesus, about a thousand years older. That's insane. Like we're looking at like a 3,000 year old corpse. Wow. The whole mummification process took about 70 days and is usually done if you, you know, if you had money, mainly for pharaohs, people like that. Oh, cool. A whole section for popes? Let's have a look. Whoa. Oh, wow. Skull caps, they call those. Another really cool place I want to go visit is Italy. Wow, look at this funeral. Man. A lot of people as John Paul II. Rest in peace. I'm surprised I have not run into James one time. I mean, then I'm not surprised because this place is rather large. I feel like I'm in a actual like mausoleum or something. Wow, look at this. It's a whole display of what Pope John Paul II's funeral looked like. I mean, it's exactly, I mean, this is how people would come and pay their respects and that's what the church looks like inside wow look so I'm not sure if this is a replica or a, a way that they do caskets for the papal or popes but this was the casket that or maybe a replica casket that John Paul II, Pope John Paul II, was buried in, and it's a three-in-one casket. What if that was the casket that was moving? Wow. So they did a great job with the soldiers, too. Those are called the Swiss Guard. You could see them in these pictures on the side, too. So yeah, the first casket is where his remains would be. The second one is made of bronze. They would usually have information about his life. And then the, the third one would, you know, be what's, I guess, sealed with that right there and has a plaque on it. Man, they really went all out. 1978. Oh, wait, he was Pope from 1978? I was about to say, he wasn't born in 1978. He'd only be like a few years older than me. But yeah, this is what his resting place looks like. I mean, to the T, look at that. I mean, they even have like the archways down. I mean, not exactly, but it's it's pretty dang close. And the casket that we saw too, that's, yep, that's what it looks like. 
beautiful. Wow, this place just keeps going. Yo, if you're ever in Houston, Texas, you have to come here to the National Funeral Museum. I think it was like $10 to get in here. We're trying to talk to the owners, which this is a historical society. Hasn't been very busy because of, of course, the winter storms that happened here recently. Definitely come visit though. They are open and it's an amazing place. If you like history, if you're into ghost stories, things like that, it's definitely a side of our history that you don't see every day. Very interesting. Oh man, what the heck is that? A Japanese hearse? Whoa. That's amazing. Dude. Wow. That is so cool. Look at the details to this thing. I want to know how old it is. Wow, so they have a whole section here dedicated just for our United States presidents. I believe that's a replica of John F. Kennedy casket which god rest his soul he was murdered here in texas so this casket was used for president ronald reagan and you can see the similarities between that casket and john f kennedy's casket so yeah these do have a lot of character Ooh, what's that one? Oh, no freaking way that's a replica casket of Abraham Lincoln's casket, that's so cool. He was our 16th president. What's sad is what he went through leading to his death. I mean, he kept having dreams of someone murdering him. I mean, he was hated during a really dark time in our American history, but this is what the funeral looked like. It was probably beautiful. And look, there's the what the casket looked like. Definitely a very unique casket. It was a funeral train. Wow. And that's what the gun looked like. It assassinated Lincoln. No way. Look at this. A flag remnant from the silk flag that was on one of the, the cars of the funeral. Man, they got some amazing stuff here. I mean, that's a long time ago. Yeah, that hearse is only from the 1970s. Kind of looks like it would be from, yeah. If I had to guess, 19, 1980s. And, okay, Dia de los Muertos. So they have like every, it's like an international display too. Boy, this place is creepy though. It's how they usually bury their dead in, in Mexico. It's super cool. So this is how they get those cars in here, or the hearse and big things. I was kind of wondering, how they get all that in here? One thing that I got to witness firsthand that I love about the Mexican culture. Now, if you didn't know, I'm 100% Hispanic, but every culture is different. I mean, just because we speak Spanish doesn't mean we follow the same cultures or even like some of the things we eat is different. I love Mexican food, but it's far different than Puerto Rican food. But one thing that I absolutely love about the Mexican culture, I mean, not only that their families are extremely close. I mean, I guess our families from Puerto Rico and Cuba, they're very close too, but it's just different in Mexico. One thing that they do is called the Dia de los Muertos. It's usually the day, I think it's the day after, don't quote me on that, maybe the day before or the day after Halloween, but families will get together, and I seen this in California. They get their whole family together and they, they celebrate these people's life. Like they do that every year. And it's like they, they have picnics outside of their, their family's gravestones. They talk about their family. They spend time together as a family. They do it in celebration of their dead loved ones that have passed on. I feel like every culture should probably start doing that. Not that we forget about our loved ones that have passed on, but they do it every year. I mean, I just, I think it's beautiful. Ooh, Undertaker. So yeah, a lot more hearse in here. Okay, I'm not saying that that's what I heard, but you heard it too. It's the first video in a while that I make with my buddy James. And of course, just like with every video, where is he? It's like, I always lose him. James can't see very well. I did show that in a vlog. I kind of pranked him 
and I was picking him up from the airport. I'm like, yeah, come, come in my car. And he, he goes to start getting in another car that I told him to start going into. It was the car in front of me. It was hilarious. People were like looking at him like, why are you trying to get in my car? I wonder if he's the one like behind me making noises. Who says you can't take money with you when you die? In this case, you can. Now, this, is, this isn't this is a casket that, I mean, I don't know if anybody was buried like this, but this was just kind of like a work of art that somebody made. And I guess thieves had stolen money from it, which is crazy. But this right here is probably the most interesting casket of them all. And it has a very bizarre story so this casket it's right here i thought at first it was a two-person casket but it's actually a three-person casket let me explain this story is crazy this casket was specially made for some parents after the death of their child they were so depressed and they had planned on doing a murder suicide kind of dark they ended up changing their mind and the casket got made anyways they wanted to get their money back but yeah that's what this was made for very interesting and supposedly they told the casket maker their plans wonder how much that costs this was in the, the 1930s it's a massive casket so sad I, I don't think any parent should have to bury their children it's like one of the worst pains imaginable so i seen this a little bit earlier and i thought they were just statues at first and I am now realizing that these are caskets they're called fantasy caskets we have a leopard there a cow a car an airplane this is so cool look at that a chicken lobster crab I mean even a freaking Yamaha motor wow yeah you have to be an artist to make who made these Okay, here we got some information. Kane Quaye. I don't know if I said that right. But if you want to read that, you can pause this video and do that. Cool. So James has been outside this entire time while we have been alone in here. That's right, he had a very important phone call. He's going to be coming back here in a second. I'm going to go grab something to eat. But anyways... I'm going to leave a link to his video in case you do want to watch it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to visit the National Funeral Museum yourself. Let them know that Omar and James sent you. And maybe spam them on social media to allow us to come here at nighttime with all of the lights shut off. No speakers on, nothing. I think that would be a great, great video. In case you missed it, I just started a brand new series called True Scary Stories where a lot of my fans, in fact, all the stories that I have so far are from you. Real, true accounts, and I bring them to life by narrating the story and adding some visuals. These videos are blowing up. Be sure to check them out. I'm gonna leave a little pop-up link so you can see what I'm talking about. I love being able to offer some different, unique, creepy content, but this place was probably by far one of my favorite museums I've ever visited. I wanna know if you've seen or heard anything. I didn't see any move, but I did hear some noises. Perhaps there's something hidden in this video that maybe you missed. That's why I encourage you to watch more than once because there's probably something extremely terrifying hiding that I may have missed. Gotta go for now before you leave. Give me a kiss.